Tusimame tu hivyo. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Eh I'm sure a man of very few words eh? And I want to keep time. Nataka kumkaribisha patron atukaribishie mnenaji wa leo. Bwana Yesu awabariki sana. Asante asante. Tupigie kiongozi wetu Martin Makovi. Tumshagirie Martin kwa sababu ya kazi jema, kazi hii uh, si rahisi. Lakini kwa neema yake Bwana anatupatia ujasiri wa kusimama hapa kwa hivyo ni baraka sana. Ah uh, yaku ni kuwashukuru wote kwa sababu ya kuingia katika nyumba lake Bwana siku hii ya leo. Ni kwa sababu ni mahali hapa tunakuja kulishwa, ni mahali hapa tunakuja kukosolewa, ni mahali hapa tunakuja kujazwa nguvu tena. Na ndio maana tukukaa nyumbani mimi na wewe tuliingia hapa ili tukaweze kusikia neno lake Bwana. Nataka kushukuru kwa sababu uh, ya uongozi wa kanisa hii kwa sababu ya kutupatia nafasi kama uh, idara ya wanaume kuhudumu kwa neema zake Bwana tumeweza kuhudumu katika wiki mzima na leo asubuhi tukahubiriwa na ndugu yetu uh, Francis Opio na wakati wa pili tukahubiriwa uh, na ndugu yetu um, uh, Timothy Guboria na, na sasa hivi uh, Mungu ameandaa tena mtumishi wake kwa ibada hii akaweza kutuletea neno lake Bwana ambao imetoka kinywani chake kutumia yeye tutalipokea kwa hivyo tuwe tayari kusikia mahusia yake Bwana na tuwe tayari na masikivu masik, kabisa kujua kile Mungu anataka tukaweza kusikia siku ya leo kwa hivyo tunataka kuweka mikono pamoja tunapomkaribisha ndugu yetu Richard Kirundo akaweza kutetea neno lake Bwana na itakuwa baraka sana karibu sana karibu sana karibu sana Richard karibu sana na itakuwa baraka Asifiwe. Bwana asifiwe. Bwana asifiwe all the men. Bwana asifiwe wa mama. Bwana asifiwe the youth. Bwana asifiwe the youth. We praise the Lord this day. I am excited. Everybody in the house is ex- ex- excited. Tell your neighbor are you excited today? Muulize njirani yako ninapongojea mtu akunisaidia kidogo Waleo na wito ni wawili mmoja akuje Karibu Shedi naona chairman pia angekuja Karibu Shedi Sijui kama pale nyuma mnanisikia Hebu tuone bwana asifiwe huko nyuma Yes naona mnanipata Asante Shedi thank you Tutahubiri naye kwa neema ya bwana and because i can see this is an excited church na kwa sababu naona ni kanisa ambalo limesisimuka today i will preach with you na leo tutahubiri kwa pamoja we will speak the word together tutanena neno kwa pamoja we will learn together na tutajifunza kwa pamoja we will grow together na tutaendelea kukumbana we will get pamoja. excited together na tutasisimuka kwa pamoja pia utakaa chini tena yes you will participate bwana asifiwe uta ujumuika bwana asifiwe amen I have spotted one of my best friends. Basi nimemuona baadhi ama mmoja wa wale ambao ni marafiki wangu wa kuu. And my closest neighbor for the last 18 years. Na ambaye tumekaa amekuwa rafiki yangu kwa zaidi ya miaka kama 18 imepita. My closest neighbor. Yule ambaye ni wa karibu sana kwangu. God Martha. Ambaye ndiye mke wake. Come say and pray for me. Waacha na aje aje na aweze kumuombea mume wake. Amen. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Haleluya. Ninamshukuru Bwana kwa nafasi hii na pia kwa sababu ya kutuwezesha kuwa katika nyumba ya Bwana. Ninaitwa Martha, Maitha. Mara nyingi nasikia mnaniita Martha Kilundo. Kilundo is our surname. So it is Martha, Maitha. Na ninampenda Bwana. Ningependa tu tumuombee mnenaji kabla haja hudumu neno. Baba katika jina la Yesu, umetupatia nafasi nyingine ya kusikia neno lako. Tunaposongea katika meza yako ninaomba ukatusaidie fungua masikio yetu ya kiroho tukapate kuelewa neno lako asubuhi ya leo Bwana tusaidie kuweza kutii 
na pia kulisikia neno lako bwana mtumishi wako anapolishiriki neno lako bwana ninamwombea ukamsaidie roho wako mtakatifu katawale mawazo yake na kamsaidie kushirikisha neno kama jinsi ulivyompatia bwana pokea sifa zote pia pamoja na mkalimani wake bwana ninawaombea ukawasaidie kunena neno kama jinsi mapenzi yako yalivyo pokea sifa katika jina la Yesu tunaomba na kushukuru amen asante Bwana akubariki sana. Ya amefanya correction Maitha ni mimi. So anataka aitwe Mrs. Martha Maitha. Kilundo is my dad. So I'm happy for that correction. Kwa hivyo nashukuru kwa sahihi. Anataka itanishwe na mimi properly. Bwana asifiwe sana. Yeye anajitambulisha nami kabisa. And we thank the Lord. May we be seated in Jesus name. Tuanze kuketi kwa viti vyetu katika jina la Yesu. I want to take this opportunity. Nataka kuchukua fursa hii to say thank you for the bishop and the pastors. Kwa hasha kuwashukuru almashauri kuanzia kwake askofu na wachungaji. All the pastors even who are here reverend Zadok. Hasa kwa kasisi Zadok ambaye yuko hapa na mchungaji Mike. And the board of this church. Na almashauri ya kanisa hili. And now most of the men's department. Na zaidi mno pia kwa ajili ya idara ya wanaume. They chose to see that I can speak today. Waazimia kwamba wakani mimi niweze kunena siku ya leo. And I accepted. Na nikawa kubali mwaliko. That's why I traveled to Nairobi yesterday. Na nikawa waweza kusafiri out of Nairobi. Nikato, nilikuwa niko nje ya Nairobi jana. came back late night. Na nikaweza kuasili Nairobi usiku wa wa leo. Fast 2 a.m. Kaa saa 8 za asubuhi ya leo. Because I was so excited I want to speak today. Kwa sababu nilikuwa na uwepo na nimeomba Mungu na niko tayari kuhudumu leo. Since I spoke ni imepita kipindi kirefu kabla wakati nilihudumu hapa I used to speak men other times but I've taken a while without speaking Basi nime nyakati zingine nimehudumu hapa lakini nimechukua muda kabla nihudumu tena mara hapa And it reminded me of those days when we started preaching Na inanikumbusha nyakati hizo ambazo tulianza kuhubiri When we would first start on Amira Wakati ambapo tulihubiri kuanzia wewe ukijitizama kwenye kio alone ukaanza kujihubiria say praise the lord ukisema kwamba na bwana asifiwe see whether you can preach eh unaona kwamba naweza kuhubiri but i thank god the spirit of the lord has Lakin, enabled me lakini nashukuru bwana kwa wake roho wake bwana yuko juu yangu and we will share the word of god na niko ready kushiriki neno la mungu and i believe we'll be all blessed na na naamini kwamba sote tutabarikiwa tell your neighbor i have no choice today naambia jirani yako kwamba mimi sina budi leo i must be blessed lazima nibarikiwe and our the theme of the men's department na basi maada ya wiki hii ya wanaume it is talking about stunty or living in a worthy manner as you are called inanena kuhusu kuishi maisha ambayo yanamuashiria muongofu ama ya utaua we want to preach about living worthy tunataka kuzungumza kuhusu kuishi maisha ya uteua of the gospel of the life that we have been granted and Jesus Christ tukiishi maisha ya injili ambayo tumekabidhiwa na Yesu Kristo the life of a born again christian maisha ya mkristo ambaye ameokoka the life of a born again christian maisha ya mkristo ambaye ameokoka and my title today na basi mada yangu leo derived from that theme ambayo inatoka katika mada ya week juma la wanaume is ni Now we are born again. Sasa tumeongofa tumeokoka. Now that we are born again, sorry. Sasa leo tumeokoka. Now that we are born again. Kwa sasa kwa sababu tumeokoka. Yes. Kwa maana tumeoko. Kwa maana tumeokoka. Now that we are born again. Kwa maana tumeokoka. And when you hear somebody give a title like the one I've given. Na mkisikia mtu akipeana tangulizi kama ule ambao tangulizi nimepeana. There are a lot of requirements. Ndio kuna hizo matakwa kadha wa kadha. Tell your neighbor now that I am born again. Mwambie jirani yako kwa sababu sasa umeokoka. Tell again another neighbor now that I am born again. Mwambie jirani mwingine kwa sababu sasa umeokoka. Then tell him again oh there is a lot expected of me. Basi mwambie tena kuna majukumu mengi ambayo na A lot is expected in the kingdom of God. Mengi yanatarajiwa kutoka kwako kwa ajili ya utukufu wa Bwana. That's why we are saying we want to stand firm. Ndipo sasa tunasema tunataka tusimame wima. We want to live a life worthy of a born again Christian. Tunataka tuishi maisha ambayo yanambatana utaua. And I'm really blessed by what Paul wrote in Philippians. Na nabarikiwa sana kwa kila ambacho Paulo anaandikia wa Filipi. In chapter 1. Katika mlango huo wa kwanza, verse 29. Na kurasa uh, msari wa 29. Chapter 1, mlango wa kwanza wa Filipi. Verse 29. Na mstari huo wa 29. 29. The Bible says. Maandiko Biblia nasema. Uh, for it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ. Just hold on, just hold on. 
verse 29, 20, sorry, 27, sorry, 27. Whatever happens, contact yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then whether I come and see you, or only about you in my absence, I know that you stand firm in the one spirit, striving together as one for the faith of the gospel. Msari wa 27, and asema hivi, lakini mwenendo wenu, na uwe kama inavyo wapasa injili ya kristo ili nikija na kuwaona ninyi au nisiupo kuwepo ni asikie mambo yenu kama mna simama imara katika roo moja kwa moyo moja mukishindania imani ya injili thank you I want us also to read Philippians 1 basi naturudi tena katika wa filipi hicho kitabu tu mlango wa verse 1 and 2 msari wa kwanza na wa pili it says ina maandiko nasema hivi Paul and Timothy servants of Jesus to all God's only people in Christ Jesus at Philip together with the overseers and deacons grace and peace to you from our father and the lord Jesus Christ msari wa kwanza na wa pili nasema hivi Paulo na Timotheo watumwa wa Kristo Yesu kwa mataifa wote katika Kristo Yesu walioko Filipi pamoja na maskofu na mashemazi nema ya, na iwe kwenu na imani zote kwa Mungu Baba yetu na kwa Bwana wetu Yesu Kristo Bwana asifiwe amina I want us to walk a journey nataka twende kwa pamoja Paul is in a jail basi Paulo yuko katika kipungu the gospel kwa sababu ya kuhubiri injili he is together with Timothy yeye pamoja but the gospel is burning his heart. Lakini injili ndani yake inachemka. That's why when you read the other verses he says even if it means to die. Ndipo sio ukisoma katika nyaraka ambazo zinaendelea nasema kwamba hata being good for me if it's for Christ. Kwa kwangu ni faida kwa ajili ya Kristo. If I live, kama nikiishi pia, it will be good for me. Pia ni vema. So long as it's for Christ. Kama tu nitaishi kwa ajili ya Kristo. That will be of benefit. Lakini itakuwa kwa faida. If I live longer, kama nitaishi za mno to be with you. Ninkiwa pamoja nanyi. To have fellowship with you. Ninkiwa pamoja na ushirika this was a man full of see the church of Jesus Christ grow. This was a man full of desire to see the church of Jesus Christ grow. Even I think in the Bible, he could be the biggest writer, even I say. He has written so many epistles. He is a messenger of hope to many. He is one of the best apostles who is good in rebuking. Is one of the apostles. Is one of the apostles. Apostle Mutume. Mutume. Watume wa Mungu. Who wants to see the church of Jesus Christ grow? Ambao anataka kuona kanisa la Mungu likiendelea. He was apostle of Jesus Christ. Ambaye alikuwa ni mtume wa Yesu Kristo. Who planted many churches. Ambaye aliweza kuanzisha makanisa mengi. Then he preached the gospel and preached the gospel. Na akahubiri injili na akahubiri injili. And he says. Na akanasema. If I die. Na kama nikufa. It is okay for Christ. Itakuwa nitakufa kwa Yesu. If I live. Na kuishi kwangu. It is okay for Christ. He was full of the desire to preach the gospel. Alikuwa mejawa wana shauku ya kuhubiri njiri. He's behind the bus. Basi, aka, a, He's behind the bus. Bus yeye akiwa ndani ya korokoroni he is still preaching and encouraging people. Angali bada na ubiri na kuweza kuatia watu mwono. He tells the church of Philippi. Anaambia kanisa wa Philippi. All the deacons. Na masaimani. All the overseers. Wala ambao wata ambao ni maskofu. And all the God's people. Na watu watu wa mungu. Tell your neighbor I'm a God's person. Mimi ambia jirani yako kwamba mimi ni mtu wa mungu. I belong to you. Mimi ni mtu wa mungu. And now Paul is talking to you. Na sasa mungu anazunguza nao. And he's telling you. Na nakuambia. Even as I am in prison. Na hata kama niko katika kifungu. I want I want to charge you, Church of Philip. I want to charge you, Church of Dandora. Nataka kuambia kanisa la Dandora. Live a life worthy of the gospel. Weze kuishi maisha ambayo ya namba. Live a life worthy of the gospel. Basi uishi maisha ambayo ya namba. Push your neighbor, tell him wish a life worth of the gospel. Hey, upanya mguu sa jirani yako. I want you to push your neighbor. Tell him live a gospel worth of the gospel. Ambia jirani yako uishi maisha ambayo ya namba na utaua. Live a life worth of the gospel. Uishi maisha ambayo ya namba na utaua. And even if we talk today. Na kama tuambiwa leo. Until tomorrow. Na kama mpaka kesho the end of the week hata pengine juma lishe if you cannot choose kama utazimia to live kuishi like a born again christian kama mkristo ambaye amezaliwa mara ya pili tutaongea 
we shall talk tuonge and we talk tutoe ushuhuda uh, we give a testimony tuendelee na kazi and we continue with so many other things lakini without that take it that challenge lakini kama tutachukua changamoto hiyo live a life kuishi maisha worthy of the gospel ambayo yanambatana na uteua i want to draw our attention nataka niwalete niwalete katika hali ya ufahamu katika kitabu cha mwanzo mlango wa sita mlango msali mlango wa kwanza msali wa sita it says inasema hivi and god created man na mungu akamu umba mwanadamu in his own image katika mfano wake mwenyewe he gave him authority na akampa mamlaka to have dominion akiwa na awe na utawala mmiliki all that crawled on the face of earth kwa ambacho kilikuwa hai katika so you as a human being kama sasa mwanadamu the starting point is you have the image of god mwanzo wako ni kwamba wewe umeumbwa katika mfano wake mungu you have the image of god una mfano wake mungu i'm saying genesis 126 nasema katika mwanzo mlango ni wa kwanza msali wa sita. God created man. Na Mungu akaumba mwanadamu in his own image. Kwa mfano wake mwenyewe. Ask yourself. Hebu jiulize mwenyewe. Do I have the image of God? Je, ninao mfano wake Mungu? Ask yourself, even Hebu, myself, do you have the image of God? Mwenyewe, na pia nami najiuliza, je? Because that is where the journey starts. Ma, kwa sababu hapo ndipo mwanzo unapo, tunapoanzia. But when God charged man, lakini wakati Mungu alimpa mwanadamu mamlaka and told him have authority. Akampa mamlaka have dominion. Uwe na utawala. Subdue the earth. Wewe uweze kujaza ulimwengu. Something terrible happened on the way. Tukikafanyika hapo njiani. Man sins. Man sins. Mwanadamu akatenda dhambi. Fell short of the glory of God. Akapungukiwa na utukufu wake Mungu. And that image. Na uo, uo, ule mfano wa Mungu. That was supposed to be the character of God in man. Ambao ulikuwa ni hali ya dhirisho ya Mungu katika mwanadamu. Had attained. Basi ikawa ina dosari. It was tinted. Ikawa na dosari. There was a dot which was Ulikuwa bad. Ulikuwa na hali ya dosari. There was no longer that grace. Hakukuwa na hiyo hali ya mfano. There was not that glory. Hakukuwa na huo utukufu tena. And man and man now required a redeemer na sasa mwanadamu akahitaji mtu wa kumkomboa and thank god because of john 3:16 now thank god because of john 3:16 na tunashukuru mungu kwa ajili ya mungu kupitia katika kitabu cha yohana mlango wa 3:16 john 3:16 yohana mlango wa 3:16 there was hope for mankind kulikuwa na tumaini kwa mwanadamu tena kwa maana the bible says in john 3:16 kwa sababu maandiko yanasema katika yohana mlango wa 3:16 for god so loved the world maana mungu aliupenda ulimwengu sana gave his only begotten son akamtoa mwanae wa pekee so that whoever believeth in him ili kwamba yule amwaminie should not perish asiangamie asi lakini awe na uzima wa milele even though the image of man that was supposed to that he was created in the image of god licha ya kwamba ule mfano wa mungu mwanadamu aliyeumbwa nao and man went away by sin na mungu akautoka katika hali ya kutenda dhambi because of god's love lakini kwa ajili ya upendo wake mungu he sends his son jesus christ anamtuma mwana wa yesu kristo and glory to the lamb of god na Glory to the lamp of God. Na utukufu kwa upendo wake Mungu. Glory to the lamp of God. Na utukufu kwa mwana kondoo wa Mungu. Glory to the lamp of God. Na utukufu kwa mwana Church I'm saying glory to the lamp of God. Kanisa nasema utukufu kwa mwana kondoo wa Mungu. When Jesus died on the cross. Yeah, wakati Yesu Kristo alikufa msalabani. There was new history written in the life of man. Kukaanza mwanzo mpya katika maisha ya mwanadamu. A testament was established. Basi kumbukumbu ikaanzilishwa pale. A covenant was established. Na kukakuwa na maagano pale. An agreement was established. Na kukakuwa na mapatano. Through the blood of Jesus kupitia katika damu ya Yesu Kristo through the blood of Jesus Christ kupitia kwa damu yake Yesu Kristo when Jesus died on the cross wakati Yesu Kristo alikufa msalabani and he shed his blood na kaweza kumwaga damu there yake. was a new testament basi ilikuwa ni hiyo ni mwanzo mpya so la maagano ya kwamba yule yote sasa atakaye muamini Mungu yote sasa atakaye muamini Mungu can be called a son in the kingdom of God na kwamba ataweza kufanyika mwana wa Mungu katika kumbi God a cohere with Jesus Christ anaweza kufanyika muridhi pamoja na Yesu Kristo there was a covenant kulikuwa na ile agano that was established ambayo ilianzilishwa and sealed na ikawa na imeazimishwa by the blood of Jesus Christ praise the lord church we have a covenant tunayo agano a new covenant agano jipya that's why we are saying ndi posa bandi mandiko nasema we are in a period called than dispensation of grace basi ndi posa mandiko tunasema kwamba watu wanasema tuko katika kipindi ambacho ni cha dispensation of grace tuko katika kipindi cha neema ambia your neighbor dispensation of grace tunaambia jirani yako kwamba tuko katika kipindi cha neema why you can say kwa nini unasema i turn away from my sins unageuka kutoka kwa dhambi zako i start a new way ninaanza njia mambo mpya then your sins my brother have forgiven na alafu unajua kwamba dhambi zako ndugu dada umesamea that is called the period on dispensation of what 
grace dispensation of what grace when you can go to the father wakati ambapo unaoendea baba when you can approach the throne au ambapo unaweza kuenda katika kiti cha kichwa enzi tell our god na muambie mungu wetu i am a sinner mimi ni mwenye dhambi i want to turn away na nataka kugeuka kutoka kwa dhambi zangu so that i can be a new creature ndipo sasa nifanyike kiumbe kipya i told you we are on a journey niliwaambia kwamba tuko katika safari before i tell you now that i'm born again kabla nikwambia kwamba sawa kwamba sasa nimeokoka we have a journey tunayo safari you have become a newborn christ tumefanyika viumbe vipya ambavyo ni vya Mkristo mpya. A person who has said not to sin. Mtu ambaye amekana dhambi. A person who has chosen to believe in Jesus Christ. Mtu ambaye amekubali kuitika kukubali kumkubali Yesu Kristo. A person who has chosen to believe in the word of God. Mtu ambaye amechagua kuliamini neno la Mungu. A person who sings like the singer who sang and said never the same again. I've never been the same again since I knew Jesus Christ. Basi mkama ule mwimbaji aliyesema alimba kusema kwamba sikubaki vile tena kasa sikubaki vile tena wakati kipindi nilipompokea Yesu Kristo. He knew he was a new creature. Alitambua kwamba baada ya kupokea Yesu Kristo alifanyika kipindi. Never the same again. Kwamba siko tena vile from the time I knew Jesus Christ. Tangia wakati nilipomfahamu kumjua Yesu Kristo. I have never been the same again. Sijakuwa vile tena. Are you that person who can sing that song? Je, ni wewe mtu huyo ambaye anaimba wimbo wimbo huo? Can you sing that song with me? Je, unaweza wimbo wimbo huo ukiwa na Never the same again. You can sing. Since I knew Jesus Christ, okay. I have never been the same again. Kusema kwamba tangia nimjua Yesu Kristo sijakuwa vile tena who can give that testimony je kuna mtu mwenye ujasiri anaweza kusema hivyo let me see acha tuone kwa mkono juu am i preaching to somebody je nahubiri kwa mtu who can sing and say ambaye anaweza kuimba na kusema i have never the same again mimi sikubaki tena vile from the time i knew jesus christ tangia kipindi nilipompokea yesu kristo which person can sing that song nani anaye ujasiri wa kusema anaweza kuimba huko praise the lord jina la bwana lisifiwe we are never the same again hauwezi kuwa tena vile ukitana na yesu kristo we are not the same again na kwa sababu sisi si wale wa kale remember my title Kumbuka mada yangu. Now that we are born again. Sasa kwa sababu tumeokoka, are you are you flow with me on the journey? Je, tunaenda pamoja katika safari hii? Je, tunaenda pamoja katika safari hii? Feel the requirements. Ili kuweza kutimiza matakwa. My brother Dennis, now Ndugu that you are born again. Ndugu yangu Dennis kwa sababu umeokoka sasa. Duku nduku, dash dash. Eh? My brother now that you are born again John. Ndugu yangu Johana kwa sababu sasa umeokoka. Mary now that you are born again. Na eh? Mary. Ah, Maria kwa sababu sasa umeokoka. Oh, I can say Martin now that you are born again. Hey, Martin kwa sababu sasa umeokoka. Mrs. Reverend now that you are born again. Ma- Mrs. Reverend kwa sababu sasa umeokoka. There are things that are expected of you. Kuna mambo ambayo yanatakana kutoka kwako. So that somebody can stand and say. Niposa mtu akuwe na ushuhuda kusema. Sure this brother Eronde is born again. Kwa hakika huyu ndugu Eronde ni mtu ameokoka. Now that I'm born again. Na sasa kwa sababu nimeokoka. Number one. Jambo la kwanza. We must live righteous life. Lazima tuishi maisha utaua Can somebody write that? Mtu aweza kuna kili hiyo. What is righteous life? U, basi maisha ya utaua ni upi? You want to do and live a holy life? Unataka kuishi na kuishi maisha matakatifu? Yes, Father, word of God. As, kulingana na neno la Mungu. As instructed by God. Vile umeagizwa na neno la na Mungu. As the spirit speaks you in your inner in your heart. Basi kama mtu ambaye anaongozwa na roho ya Mungu ndani yako. That in a small voice. When the spirit of the Lord wakati roho wa Mungu speaks speaks to you anakunenea through that smooth inner voice kupitia katika hiyo sauti nyembamba ya roho yake na anakuambia this is right basi hii ndio haki do it tenda hii this is wrong na hii ni mbaya makosa run away from it toroka kutoka kwae now that we are born again sasa kwa sababu umeokoka we need to choose to live a righteous life ya tupasa tuazimie kuishi maisha ya uteua second peter says basi petero wa pili anaandika kusema i think chapter 2 i'm not uh, Nat- i think chapter 2 natumai ni mlango huo wa pili yeah, peter is warning people about the second coming of jesus basi petero anawaza kwa kuwaonya watu kuhusu mkurejea kwa pili kwa Yesu Kristo. Must be Peter. Lazima iwe ni Petro wa pili. He tells them. He tells them. Anawaambia them that are not righteous. Waambie wale ambao ni them wenye that haki. are not righteous. Wale ambao sio wenye haki, them that are not righteous. Wale ambao sio wenye haki will be burned. Watachomwa kwa moto. By fire. Kwa moto. On brimstone. Uh, moto ambao ni kama kiberiti. I love the way Peter scares us. Na na, na napenda vile the Peter anatufisha. Basi maneno ambao ni That's all right. How the world will be burned. Ujinsi ulimwengu utaweza kuchomwa. And I love that scare. Na napenda hiyo hali ya kutishwa huko. Me as a Christian I need to be scared. Mimi kama mkristo ninataka kuweza kutishwa napenda napenda kutishwa if you are not scared when you are doing a sin wakati kama wewe hauti upati kutishika wakati unatenda dhambi you are not a serious christian basi wewe si mkristo ambaye anamaanisha my brother you must be scared lazima ndugu dada uweze kuwa na kwa i'm scared mimi ninatishika i'm scared natishika because there is fire 
kwa sababu kuna moto tell your neighbor no. mwambie ndio jirani yako unaweza kaa ngumu eh hey, you can stay alert lakini kuna moto unakuja oh, oh. But there is fire. Tell your you. neighbor choose to live righteously. Wewe mwambie jirani yako azimia kuweza kuishi maisha ya uteua. Now that you are born again. Sasa kwa sababu umeokoka. You need to learn the word of God. Ya kupasa kujifunza neno la Mungu. You need to study the word of God. Ya kupasa kujifunza kusoma neno la Mungu. You need to trust the word of God. Ya kupasa kuazi kuegemea neno la Mungu. You need to believe in the word of God. Na kuishi kwa neno la Mungu. Paul writes and says. Paulo anaandika kusema. Let the word of God. Waacha neno la Mungu richly dwell in your hearts. Liweze kudumu ndani ya mioyo yetu. He never talked about politics. Hakuzi He never talked about blue. blue blue color. Blue color. Samawati ndio blue. Yes. Yeah. Hakunaenda feed lazima uweze kuishi you must continue feeding lazima uzidi kuishi kula you must continue reading na uweze kuzidi kusoma you must continue appreciating na lazima uzidi kuweza kukumbatia the word of god neno la mungu tell your neighbor mwambie jirani yako for you to be strong in christ ya kupaswa uwe mkakamavu katika kristo yesu for you to develop a strong christian character kwako wewe kuwa na msimamo thabiti katika kristo so that you can live a life ndipo uweze kuishi maisha worthy of your calling ambayo yanambatana mwito wako Please read the word of God. Hebu nena na kusoma neno la Mungu. What is the calling? Somebody is asking. Basi mtu akauliza mwito ni nini? Which is this calling the Bible is talking about? Mwito ni upi ambao hii Biblia inaenda kuhusu? What is this calling Paul is talking about? Basi huu mwito ambao Paulo anazungumza ni mwito upi? Basi mwito huu Paulo anazungumzia. Ili kwa, ni kwamba wewe uweze kutoka kudhambi, uweze kumwamini Kristo and live in a Christian life. Na uweze kuishi katika maisha ya Kristo. Look at Elder Chege. Ndipo so unapo mtazama Mzee Chege. Elder Chege is born again. Unaweza kusema kwamba Mzee Chege yeye ni mtu wa Umeokoka. Now that you are born again. Na sasa kwa sababu umeokoka. Number three, Jambo la tatu. You need to be prayerful. Lea, ya kupaswa uwe ni mtu wa maombi. You need to be prayerful. Ya kupaswa uwe ni mtu wa maombi. My brother, my sister, you have no choice. Wewe mdugu dada hauna budi. Now that you are born again. Kwa sababu sasa umeokoka. Remember and know. Kumbuka na upate kujua. There is power in prayer. Kuna nguvu ambayo inapatikana katika maombi. There is power in prayer. Kuna nguvu katika maombi. There is power in prayer. Kuna nguvu katika maombi. We are preaching together. Tunahubiri kwa pamoja. Kevin we are preaching together. Tunahubiri kwa pamoja Kevin. Tell your neighbor power in prayer. Waambia jirani yako kwamba kuna nguvu katika maombi. There is power in prayer. Kuna nguvu katika maombi. And when you are prayerful. Wakati ambapo wewe ni mtu wa maombi. God helps you. Mungu anakusaidia develop a character uweza kuwa na muundo that will make you stand firm ambao utakusababisha kusimama wima as father calling that god has called you unto hasa kulingana na mwito ambao Mungu amekuita kwao am i preaching to somebody je inahubiri kwa mtu hapa i'm also preaching to myself pia mimi najihubiria now that you are born again sasa kwa sababu umeokoka can people in the estates basi kuna watu katika mtaa wako wa kuishi can people in the estates kwa watu katika mtaa wako wa kuishi say that you are born again wanaweza kusema na kuweka alama ya 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 kika kwamba umeokoka can people say watu wanaweza kusema this person prays mtu huyu ni mwombaji can people say watu wanaweza kusema he has prayed for me basi ameoniombea and my life has never been the same again na maisha yangu hayakubaki bila tena jesus prayed yesu kristo aliomba and he told his disciples na akaambia wanafunzi wake pray and pray na muombe na kukosekoa pray and pray na muombe pasipo kukoma even when jesus was going through trials hata wakati ambapo yesu kristo alikuwa anapitia mazito magumu he prayed aliomba and his sweat turned to blood na wakati mpaka watu wakaona kwamba jasho lake lilionekana kama ni and he did this powerful and emotional prayer that we know all of us ni kumaanisha kwamba alikuwa katika maombi ya father akiomba baba if it is your will kama ni mapenzi yako let this cup pass na kikombe hiki kinipite it is only prayer that can save you ni maomba maombi tu yanaweza kuokoa we are living in very difficult times tunaishi katika nyakati ambazo ni ngumu people are economically stressed watu katika hali ya kiuchumi wamegandamizwa people are financially constrained kabisa katika hali ya kifedha watu wamefinyika people have family that are full of shakers 
hata katika jamii kuna hali ya misukosuko things are tight in nairobi mambo ni magumu nairobi hii things are tight in the world mambo ni magumu katika ulimwengu kote things are tight even in the country hata mambo ni magumu kule mashambani yesterday i was in the upcan at the up country basi jana nimekuwa kule mashambani and i'm really surprised how people are also struggling ninashangaa kwa sababu hata kule mashambani watu wanangangana zaidi the has gone very high kule hata mahindi yale yasiyoshagwa bado yame bei yake imepanda juu zaidi the price of beans has really gone very high maharage pia yamepanda bei mno and as you know too well na kama vile mnavyofahamu kenya has had poor rains for the last two years basi wa katika miaka miwili imepita kenya tujakuwa na mvua even the kutoshu. areas that are productive hata mahali ambapo kunaweza kutoka mazao even the areas which are productive hata mahali ambapo kuna mazao yanaweza toka kwa njia nzuri they are confessing things are not working out lakini kwamba mambo hayakuwa mazuri but i told people some people i met at home lakini nikamwambia watu ambao nilikutana na kule nyumbani there is hope Kungali kuna tumaini. Continue preparing your chambers. Mungali tu muendelee kutakuwa It is about to rain. Huko karibu mvua itanyesha. Because of the power of the prayer, it is about to rain. Kwa sababu ya nguvu ya maombi kutanyesha. Even I'm telling the church, it is about to rain. Hata naambia kanisa, karibu tu utapata mvua. You will get the school fees next week. Tutapata hiyo karo ya shule Juma lijalo. Sometimes we are on this WhatsApp, eh? Wakati mwingine tuko katika hii hali ya mtandao. I tell you because we God has saved us, we have wisdom. Na nakuambia kwa sababu Mungu ametuokoa na ametupa heki we stop to choose good things and also that are bad. Na tuna ile uamuzi wa kuenenda katika mambo ambayo ni maovu na mengine ambayo ni mazuri. So don't refuse to be on WhatsApp groups. They are good. Kwa hivyo usikubali kuingia katika katika vikundi vikundi. So there was this Na mtu akawa na shiriki hiyo TikTok. Who is say now school fees na anasema kwamba wakati huu karo ya shule should be paid on a daily basis inastahili iwe naripwa kama token because shule inafungwa leo kwa sababu shule inafunguliwa leo inafungwa kesho ni inafungwa kesho now is fili it is actually that was expression of a person who is hard is by the economic times huyu ni mtu ambaye amepiga hesabu akaona kwamba mtoto anapoenda shule apati eh even he was saying yeah, yeah, kila ambacho analipia gharama ya kila ambacho analipia school fees must be paid yeah anasema like kwamba token for electricity yeah anasema kwamba shule karo ya shule wa pengine imefika tuweze kuilipia kama vile tunavyolipia uh, msalio ya kupiga simu if i pay for two days kama nimeweka ya, ya 20 bob my son can go for two days and then come back home kwa some siku hizo mbili na rudi if there is no money kama hakuna hela for the token kwa ya kulipia you can say at home basi weka nyumbani that is an expression of a person who is financially hiyo ni dirisho ya mtu ambaye anapitia hali ngumu but glory be to god lakini utukufu ni wake mungu it is going to rain again kwamba kutanyesha tena it is going to rain again kutanyesha tena because there is power in prayer kwa sababu kuna nguvu katika maombi somebody praise the lord bwana anasifu jina lake and we appreciate our jesus christ acha tumpigie yesu kristo makofi Now that we are born again. Na sasa kwa sababu umeokoka, we need to be on the forefront. Lazima tuwe katika msari wa mbele to share the word of God. Kuweza kushiriki neno hili la Mungu. To preach the gospel. Kuweza kuhubiri injili. To encourage others to know the truth. Kuweza kuatia wengine moyo kuweza kuwafahamisha ukweli. Paul was reminding the Philippians. Paul alikuwa anawakumbusha wa Philippi. I am behind the bars. Mimi niko kifungoni because of the gospel. Kwa ajili ya injili. I do not want you na si ingetaka ninyi to stop preaching the gospel kukoma kaendelea kuhubiri injili even as we are in the prison we are together in partakers of all this hata kama niko katika gereza mimi ni mshiriki pamoja nanyi katika haya and father in chapter 4 of philippians katika tukitapo endelea katika mlango wa 4 katika kifungu hicho kitabu cha he appreciate the church of philippi basi yeye anashukuru kanisa la philippi and he tell them na anawaambia thank you for praying with me asanteni kwa kuweza kunifanyia dua thank you for supporting me asanteni kwa kuweza kukidhi mahitaji yangu and he encourage them tell them continue Nazidi kuatia moyo kuambia wazidi kumtumia wakazidi katika hali ya kuhubiri injili. Where do we preach the gospel? Ni wapi tunahubiri injili? At our workplaces. Mahali kwetu kazini. In our neighborhood. Katika hali ya kwetu pa kuishi. In the open air. Katika mikutano ya hadhara. Through our WhatsApp groups. Katika vikundi hivyo ambavyo tuko ndani ya. Through family meetings. Katika mikutano ya nyumbani ya kijamii. Through merry go rounds. Katika zile merry go rounds. Through parties. Katika mahali ambapo tumeenda katika hali ya kujifurahisha. Why am I say parties? Kwa nini nasema kwa nini nasema hivyo kwa kwa mahali ambapo kujifurahisha watu wengine wakati wanapoenda katika mahali pa kujifurahisha na ni wa Kristo mimi mwenyewe nimeenda katika sherehe nyingi kama and you cannot nibu. miss wine in that party na wakati mwingi pengine usikose kileo katika mikutano kama hiyo. That wine looks classic. Na hiyo divai inaonekana kwamba ni nzuri. Because everybody is taking. Kwa sababu kila mtu ana, anaitumia. But unless you choose to let these people know even in this party I'm born again 
Now, mjua kwamba hata nikiwa katika kusanyiko hilo bado ni ngali nimeokoka. Unless you choose to tell the people. Lakini kama hautazimia kuambia watu. Even if it's a party. Hata kama kwamba ni sherehe. I am born again. Mimi sinywi kileo mimi nimeokoka. Tell your neighbor. Ambia jirani yako. Even in the parties. Hata katika sherehe. You are born again. Salia kwa Mkristo. Push somebody. Push somebody and tell him you are born again. Kuza mtu mimi nimeokoka. Tell that person you are born again. Mwambia mtu huyo nimeokoka. I don't know whether we are getting encouraged. Sijui kama tunatiwa moyo. Are we getting encouraged? Je, tunatiwa moyo? Are we getting encouraged? Je, tunatiwa moyo? Are we, are we going to say now that we are born again? Je, tutasema kwamba kwa sababu sasa tumeokoka. We will preach the gospel. Tutahubiri injili. Praise the Lord. Amina. Bwana asifiwe. Amen. Now that we are born again. Na sasa kwa sababu umeokoka. We need to be rich in fellowship. Lazima tuwe watu ambao wakujumuika katika mikutano. We need to participate in fellowship. Lazima tuingie katika mikutano ya ya ya, ya Wakristo. We need to fellowship with our brothers and sisters. Lazima tuwe na ushirika na ndugu na dada. The Bible says. Maandiko Biblia nasema, do not cease. Basi mna msukome ama msipuuze of coming together. Ile hali ya kukuja kwa pamoja as has become habit of men of you. Kama jinsi wengine wameazimia. There is power in fellowship. Kunayo nguvu ya ushirika. Where my brother is weak. Wakati ambapo ndugu yangu ana udhaifu fulani, he will I will lift him up. Ah basi nitamuinua. Where I'm wrong? Mahali ambapo nimekosea. My brother will rebuke me. Ndugu yangu atanisaiisha. Where I'm lost? Mahali ambapo nimepotea. I will get away in fellowship. Basi nitaweza kurudishwa katika njia. Can we be in fellowship with one another. Je, tunaweza patikana katika ushirika na mmoja na mwingine. Now that you are born again. Na kwa sababu sasa tumeokoka. May we show our love to one another. Na tuonyeshe pia tudhihirishe upendo mmoja na mwingine. May we have a character tuwe na tabia that is full of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Ambayo imejawa na kipawa cha Roho Mtakatifu. Be in gentle. Be, to be in gentle. Tuwe na watu ambao tuna upole. To be merciful. Tuwe na watu ambao wamejawa na rehema. To be uruma. good. To being good to others. Tuwe watu ambao ni wema kwa wengine. To have good temperance. Tuwe na hali ya kiasi. Now that we are born again. Na kwa sababu sasa umeokoka, we must you need to raise that as a point. Now that we are born again. Na kwa sababu sasa umeokoka, you must have a character. Lazima uwe na muundo ama tabia. That is full of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Ambao imejawa na kipao vipawa vya Roho Mtakatifu. I can see my time is almost over. Naona wakati wangu ni kama umenipa kisogo. But I'm excited because I saw all the men led the praise and worship. Lakini nashukuru Mungu kwa jinsi wazee hapa wamefanya mambo katika kipo. Niliona kana kwamba watu pengine ni kama wamechoka. But it was so awesome. Lakini it was so awesome. Lakini ilikuwa ni ajabu. And I want to tell you these men are strong. Lakini these men are strong. Na kutaka niwaambieni kwamba hao waimbaji ni watu wenye nguvu. So the standard time of preach is between 45 minutes and 1 hour. Lakini unajua wakati wa maubiri na kuanga lisali moja ama lisali moja na strong people like men. Kwa watu ambao wana nguvu na uweza. I've taken a few it's 29 minutes uh, I'm within the time. Nimechukua dakika karibu 30 bado ni ngali katika muda wangu. Because standard preach is between 45 and 1 hour. Kwa sababu hali ya kawaida ni mhutubiri kwa karibu dakika 45 ama lisali moja. I want us to read Galatians 5. Nataka tusome kitabu cha Wagalatia mlango wa 5 to 23. Basi msari wa <coughs> Galatians 5. Wagalatia ni mlango wa 5 to 23. No. Msari wa 20 na Sorry. Galatians 5. Wa Galatia 5. 22. Mstari wa 22 to 23. Mpaka 23. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, continue, gentleness and self-control. Against such there is no law. Can we repeat again? Go up again. Uh, up 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 22. 22 but the fruit of the holy Sp- of the spirit is love joy peace long suffering kindness goodness gentleness self control against such there is no law That's now that you are born again na sasa kwa sababu umeokoka I challenge you today na kuchanga moto leo allow your christian life waacha ruhusu maisha yako ya kikristo to be filled ewe imejawa to be controlled eweze kumilikiwa to be guided imeelekezwe by the 
fruits of the Holy Spirit. Na vipaji vya Roho Mtakatifu. Because if you have the fruits of the Holy Spirit, na kama uko na tunda la Roho Mtakatifu, they will shape your character. Basi vitaelekeza tabia na muundo wako. And if you can possess these fruits, na kama utakuwa na vipawa hivi vya matunda hayo, people will say for sure my brother, watasema watu kwamba huyu ndugu yangu, for sure my sister, kwa hakika huyu dada, your life, maisha yako is worthy. Ina ka, ina ni sawia na the call that you've gotten na mwito ambao uko nao to be born again to be christian kuitwa mkristo ambaye ameokoka somebody very quickly let us read matthew 5 kwa haraka tusome katika kitabu cha matayo mlango ni wa 5 mstari mstari wa 3 quickly i want to read one or two verses then we conclude nataka nisome mstari michache pale alafu tutamaliza matayo 5 mstari wa 3 Yeah, we can go there we are there we are that is Matthew 5 3 to 12 blessed are the poor in spirit for there is kingdom for theirs is the kingdom of god continue let's bless are those who mourn for they will be comforted blessed are the meek for they will inherit the earth blessed are those who anger and thirst for righteousness for they will be filled continue blessed are the merciful for they will be shown mercy blessed are the pure in heart for they will see god blessed are the peacemakers for they will be called children of god let's move on blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness for theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed are you when people insult you persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me rejoice and be glad because god is your reward and in heaven, in heaven for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you for the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before me praise the lord amen it is not in vain when you choose to have these characters basi si bure kwako kiwa na tabia ya namna hii there is reward Kuna... when you live a life kunayo thawabu ukiishi maisha that is worthy the calling that you have received amani inambatana na mwito ambao umepokea tell your neighbor tell to yourself i choose to live a life basi jiambie mwenyewe kwamba naazimia kuishi maisha that is worthy ambayo yanambatana of my calling na mwito nilio nao i know the lord kwa sababu najua bwana will bless me atanibariki will reward me atani kidhia will reward me atani atani and more so na zaidi have eternal life na nitakuwa na uzima wa milele may god bless you very much na bwana aweze kuwabariki mno Hallelujah. Let's appreciate the preacher of today. Kabisa 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 kabisa. And the interpreter to appreciate. Let's appreciate Drak. Hallelujah. Hakika liwaambia Mungu atanena nasi na amenena. Saa zingine vizuri kusikiza vile Mungu anakuongoza. Kuna vitu ambazo nilikuwa ni sungumuze. Wakati nilisikia nikisema I'm a man of few words and the same things I may repeat. Eh Wakati ule wewe atukuoni. Hauko na sisi. Maisha yako inakuanga aje. Pale kazini umesafiri kama mimi kuna wakati Mungu alinibariki by his grace nikaenda DRC na tulisafiri siku nane day and night it was last year Eight days Kenya ni kuzuri by the way wale nimeshiriki na wao wanajua tulisafiri Eight days na mimi niliona mambo ambayo sijaiona Kenya that's why nimeuliza wakati ule hauko 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 hapa wiki imeisha na tume tumetoka hapa na tumeenda 
atuko na wewe basi sasa hizo hata ayuko wakati huo mke wangu akua atukasafiri and i should tell my friends what wale tulikuwa tumesafiri wa Kenya wawili tu ndio wako wa kule walikuwa wameenda wanaume wale tulikuwa na wao walio huko na wako na familia zao wengine hata ni wazee kuniliko they went there lakini sisi kwa vile kuna ule Mungu ambaye ako ndani yetu i could remember that atukuweza kuindaji in that but they did it some of us tunajipatanga hapo and that's why the word today it's very clear let's live a worthy life of Christ hapo chini ukisoma hapo hiyo 27 enda usome wakati ule atuko na atukuoni wakati ule mke wangu anioni acha ni emphasize on that i was in a foreign country huko hakukua na pasta ama ama mtu ananijua but by the time i left there actually walikuwa wananiita mzae even they tried to entice my the young man mwenye nilikuwa nimeenda naye then one night hata wamempangia hata ameletewa mwanamke wakaniita kijana akakuja wakaniita akaniambia kumeharibika akaniamsha aliamsha saa saba usiku they knew my stand na nashukuru Mungu kwa hiyo sijipigi ndebe majaribu yatakuja lakini wacha Yesu akasimame yes. haleluya yes. that's what we need e, nataka tumalize e, kuna protocol lakini ni kuna jambo nilikuwa nataka tufanye kuna watoto wanarudi shule mwenye atakuja waombe kuna mambo mengi ambayo yanaendelea kwa mashule Mungu akasaidie na kuna class in your own time kuna ile class inakalia form 4 this year it's one of the most disadvantaged class Mungu akawanemeshe wakapate kibali their time was very short kwa hivyo tuwakumbuke hata tunapoenda kuwaombea leo eh, Mungu akaonekanie they need huyo Mungu na president siku moja akasema even science inahitaji Yesu inahitaji Mungu the same way wanahitaji Mungu otherwise uh, let me welcome the chair I take over from there. Na Mungu awabariki sana asante. Amen. Bwana asifiwe. Asante sana nduku Richard kwa ajili ya neno. Nimekuwa neno ambalo ni la baraka. Na wakati neno linapokuja Mungu anakuanga maandaa watu wake wa kulipokea neno. And wakati neno linakuja there is a purpose it has to accomplish in our lives nataka tu tukiwa katika hiyo mudi ya maombi ukaese kuyapendeleza maisha yako ukaese kujiangalia how is your life how is your relationship with god the word imetuambia kwamba living a life worthy of the calling of christ have you been living a life worthy of the calling of christ wakati uko peke yako wakati hakuna mtu yeyote anakuona wakati uko katika jamii yako jamii yako mke wako na watoto tu ndio wanakujua wakikuangalia hivi wataona kwamba huyu mzee ama huyu baba ameokoka wakati jamii yako itakuangalia hivi itaona Yesu ndani ya maisha yako or it's going to see something different nataka tu jiangalia maisha yako and if there is a place ambayo you need to make a reconciliation with Jesus with God ni wakati mzuri ili ukaweze kufanya Bwana natupenda na jali 
and wakati neno la Mungu linapokuja Mungu anakuanga ameona maisha yetu anaona ya kwamba mahali fulani nahitaji kurekebisha na maisha yetu Mungu anataka kuyarekebisha jioni mchana wa leo ili akaweze kupata nafasi katika maisha yetu nena tuna Bwana mwangambia Bwana ukaweze kunisaidia hii safari sio rahisi Yesu akaambia wanafunzi ya kwamba sitaweza kuacha kama yatima bali naenda kuachia msaidizi ambaye ni Roho Mtakatifu ambaye atakayeweza kuwasaidia katika hii maisha ya wokovu alikuwa anajua ya kwamba hii maisha ya wokovu sio rahisi akiwaambia kwamba mkae pale mpaka siku ya nye Roho Mtakatifu atakuja alikuwa anajua ya kwamba hii maisha safari ya wokovu sio rahisi hata wewe na mimi safari sio rahisi tunahitaji Mungu akaweze kutushika mkono Mungu akaweze kutusaidia na wakati tunapoendelea hivyo najua kwamba Bwana akayataweza kutusaidia Bwana tunakutukuza Asante kwa ajili ya neno lako Asante kwa sababu wewe ni Mungu mwema unatupenda Asante kwa ajili ya neno lako ambalo tumeweza kulisikia mchana wa leo baba tunanyenyekesha mikono mwako tuachie kwamba kwa njia moja ama nyingine atucheenenda kati ya mapenzi yako lakini ombi letu mchana wa leo ya kwamba bwana utaweza kutusamea Bwana utaweza kuturehemu, utaweza kuturudisha katika njia zako ili tukaweze kuishi maisha ambayo yanakutukuza. Mfalme tunakwenu, tunakupa sifa kwa sababu wewe ni mwema. Kama sio wewe ningekuwa katika hiyo hali wakati ambapo tumeinamisha vicha vyetu labda uko mahali hapo hujapeana maisha yako kwa Yesu ukipenda tutuweze kuomba pamoja nawe unaweza nyosha mkono wako juu unaweza kunyosha mkono wako juu hapo ndipo mwanzo wa kutembea pamoja na Yesu we uko mahali hapa hujasalimisha maisha yako kwa huyu mfalme wa falme you can lift up your hand ili tukaweze kuomba pamoja na wewe maisha ya kwa na yale ambayo mhubiri amehubiri ya kwamba lambda unaona hujatenda vile ambavyo ulistahili kutenda baada ya kuokoka maana hilo swali baada ya kumkopokea Yesu ni nini inayofuatia lambda unajihisi kuna mahala ambapo umepungukiwa ungeenda ungependa kumwambia Bwana Yesu aweze kukurehemu na aweze kukushika mkono ili ukatembee wima na ukaweza kutembea kama balozi wake naweza inua mkono wako tukaweza kuomba pamoja naye na wewe falme wa falme tunalitukuza jina lako asante kwa sababu umezungumza nasi Bwana tunakuomba mahali ambapo tumepungukiwa katika kulihubiri neno lako katika kutembea katika njia za haki katika kutembea katika njia nyofu katika kutembea katika njia ya maombi katika kutembea katika njia ya kushuhudia Bwana tunaomba ukaweze kuturehemu uturehemu ala siri ya leo na tunaomba nguvu mpya Naomba utuwishe upya Bwana katika safari hii ili mahala pote tuendapo Bwana ikajulikane kwamba sisi ni chumfi sisi ni nuru ni kwa sababu tumefanyika kuwa viumbe vipya na Bwana tunatembea katika njia zako Bwana turehemu na utusaidie ututie nguvu mpya Bwana ili dispensation hii ya neema tusikaichukulie kimzaa bali bwana tumaanishe tukijua ya kwamba tutakuja kutoa hesabu mbele zako tukijua ya kwamba bwana kuna moto wa kuteketeza wale ambao watakuwa wamenenda katika njia zako 
tukijua ya kwamba kuna mauti ya milele bwana tunaomba msaada wako tunaomba utusaidie e bwana tukatembee kama barua inayosomeka wazi ambayo italeta utukufu kwa jina lako bwana tunakushukuru kwa ajili ya mnenaji wa neno lako mbariki pamoja na jamii yake ukamtie nguvu na bwana unapomfungulia mlango wa kunena neno lako bwana ninaomba ukatembee naye maana wewe ni Mungu mkuu hata kila mmoja wetu ambaye amelisikia neno hili likaweza kupata kuzama tunda katika maisha yetu na sifa na utukufu zikakurudie katika jina la Yesu bwana na mwokozi tunaomba tukishukuru amen tumpigie bwana Yesu makofi amen amen asante ndugu richard kwa neno hilo now that you are born again now that you are born again tukumbuke our identity yetu ni katika kristo na tunapokumbuka hivyo basi tutatembea katika njia ambazo kristo angependa tutembee kwayo Uh, kabla tutoe jana nilipita pale soko la flyover kuna kipindi nikitoka nakuru tulipita pale na nikanunua dania nikapea na huyo mama shilingi mbili kunirudishia change nilichukua nikaweka kwa mfuko sikuangalia lakini kufika kwa nyumba nikapata ni shilingi moja na hamsini mbili na maanisha hakuchukua hamsini yake. Na jana juu nilikuwa ninapita barabara hiyo nikasimama maana nilikuwa ni mafahamu nikasimama nikaenda sura sikuishika lakini nilienda kwa hiyo kibanda na nikauliza kuna ule mama aliniuzia hapa dania juzi usiku na hiyo mama akaniambia ni mimi huwa tu hapa hata usiku. Nikamwambia mama nilikupa mbili na huku toa hamsini yako ndio nimekuletea. Swali la kwanza liniuliza, kwani umeokoka? Majuma yamepita mawini kumbusha juma hilo lingine tulipita hapa usiku mwendo wa saa ilikuwa karibu saa mbili usiku na tukanunua vitu dania ile nilinunua mwisho nilikupa pesa ukanirudishia zote. Mama akauliza kwani umeokoka? Nikamwambia ndio mama nimeokoka na ndio sababu nimesema venye ninapita hapa ni kurudishie pesa zako. Ningechukulia tu ni shilingi hamsini apotelea mbali. Lakini kwa sababu nilipofika kwa nyumba nikaangalia la miambili niliyopeana imerudi miambili tena. Ni vile tu nimepewa change moja na hamsini mbili lakini ilinibidi nimrudishie. Hata kama sikuchukua wakati wa kuhubiri alijua bado kuna watu wameokoka na wanatembea katika njia za Mungu. Wapendwa, kuna vitu ambavyo ama kuna njia ambazo Mungu angependa baada ya kuokoka tukatembee katika njia zinazodhihirisha kwamba tumeokolewa na huyu Yesu. Ni wakati wa kutoa. Ni wakati wa kutoa.